This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. Sapporo is an unusual city. Not because of its location, or its climate, or its food, or its culture, as wonderful and unique as all of those things might be. It's unusual because of how it came to be. For a Japanese city, it's relatively young, founded officially in 1868. But in 1870, the prefectural government approached the United States for help in developing the city's blank canvas. In response, Ulysses S. Grant appointed an Oyatoi Gaikakujin, or foreign advisor. The result is a city structure unlike anything else in Japan with a city block grid system emanating from a large central park. Sound familiar? And as the city's development progressed throughout the 20th century, that planning system was more or less adhered to, resulting in the city we see before us today. Sapporo is served by New Chitose International Airport, located about 30 miles southeast of the city. Now, despite its small stature, the air corridor between this airport and Haneda in Tokyo is the third busiest passenger air route in the world. Nine million people a year fly between the two cities, making up nearly half of the airport's total traffic. An impressive stat, to be sure. But just as impressive is the fact that this airport has its own onsen. What an ingenious way to take off the edge of the normal airport proceedings. But no matter where you're coming from or going to, New Chitose International Airport is a tidy, efficient airport with strong public transport links into the city center. Your best bet by far is this, the rapid airport service, which leaves every 15 minutes from the airport train station just underneath the rivals. The 37 minute journey will cost you just over a thousand yen. You can use your IC card or buy a ticket from one of the machines in the terminal. Alternatively, limousine buses operate door-to-door -door shuttle services from both the domestic and international terminals to various hotels and landmarks in Sapporo. The journey can take up to an hour depending on your destination, but the buses are clean and comfortable. Finally, while there are taxis, be warned this is not a cheap option. The one-hour journey from the airport to Sapporo will cost around 16,000 yen, or by November 2018 conversion rates, around 150 US dollars. While it is technically possible to get to Sapporo from Tokyo and other cities in Honshu, the Tokyo Shinkansen line does not yet reach Sapporo, so it takes a very long time and is markedly more expensive. That said, the line is inching towards connecting the two cities, and the plan suggests that when it's finally completed in 2031, You'll be able to get to Sapporo from Tokyo in under four hours. That's compared to the 12 hours it takes today. But for now, flying to Sapporo is your best bet. But that means that you get to experience the joy of domestic air travel in Japan. And once you've tasted that sweet, sweet nectar, all other airport experiences will make you even angrier than they already do. Comfortable, efficient, and incredibly punctual, Japanese air travel proves to the rest of the world that airports needn't be like slamming your hand in a car door over and over again. When you arrive in Sapporo proper, that unique grid system makes navigating the city extremely easy, with street addresses using the North X, West Y format. Even two of the three subway lines adhere to this pattern, with an Amboku line running north to south and the Tozai line running east to west along Odori, the city's main thoroughfare. Speaking of the subway, the Sapporo subway is a great way to get around the city. Single tickets start at just 200 yen and your fare is based on how far you're traveling. You can buy subway only tickets, but you can also buy transfer tickets, which allow you to switch between the subway and the streetcar or subway and buses as well. If you're going to be using the subway more than a couple of times, even for just a day, it's worth getting a one-day travel card, which for 500 yen on a weekend or 800 yen on a weekday gives you unlimited travel on the subway. You can also get transfer one-day cards, which allow you to switch between the subway and streetcars and subway and buses as well. If you're coming from another part of Japan, you can, of course, use your Suica, Pasmo, or many of the other regional travel smart cards, including Sapporo's own Sapika card on the Sapporo subway, streetcar, and buses. The Sapporo streetcar service, which runs in a loop from the city center, has been in service for well over a century. 
The earliest incarnation was the Sapporo Stone Horse Car Railway before the line was electrified in 1918 and it became the service that we know and love today. Now much like the subway, you can use your IC card to pay or you can put the exact change in the coin box, both as you leave the streetcar. Taxis are abundant in Sapporo and you can hail one the old-fashioned way or, as friend of attaché Joseph Tame explains, you can use the ingenious Japan Taxi app. Uber is just not a thing in Japan. However, if you have the Japan Taxi app, you can use this to hail a cab pretty much anywhere. And also, if you hail a cab just on the street and you find they've got a screen that supports this app, you can use it to pay for your ride. It's really simple. Sapporo has a plethora of vantage points to view this wonderful city from, but it also hosted the 1972 Winter Olympics, and much of the infrastructure not only remains intact, but is accessible to the public. So if you're gonna pick one vantage point, I definitely recommend this one. This episode of Attaché is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. I've been a Squarespace user and fan for years. In fact, my personal site at alexhunter.org is built using Squarespace and is always up to date because with Squarespace, I never have to install, patch, or upgrade. The Attaché website, also built using Squarespace, including, and this is such a great feature, the online store, which makes it so easy for us to sell the Attaché book, keep track of inventory, manage orders, all in one place. Anyone can build a website on Squarespace. All you have to do is head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to unleash your awesomeness on the world, go to squarespace.com slash attache and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The more I travel around Japan, the more I realize that the idea of a generic quote unquote Japanese food is entirely ridiculous. While you can, of course, find regional riffs on the staples we associate with this country, ramen, sushi, etc., the variety in those riffs is so broad as to be almost unrecognizable when compared to each other. Sapporo and Hokkaido in general are no exception. The climate and geology on this island support an entirely different range of crop and livestock and its relatively late settlement meant that the established culinary practices had yet to take hold. The result is a food culture that feels familiar while being utterly unique. And Nijo Market is a great place to experience the best of Sapporo's food offerings. The wonderful thing about this market is that you can get this with rice bowls with all kinds of locally sourced seafood that you can either buy to take home and cook or you can have in one of these beautiful rice bowls or dombori. And there's all kinds of combinations, but the classic is uni and salmon roll, sea urchin and salmon roll, or this salmon sashimi and flaked hairy crab. The hairy crab is the superstar of Hokkaido food and is not to be missed, but you have to get here early. It's just after 10 o'clock in the morning. This place opens at 7 a.m. and it's gone. Uh, we, I think we got the last little bits and pieces, so you've got to get here early if you want to experience the hairy crab. It's not cheap, about 2,500 yen for this set, which is 23 US dollars, but it's absolutely worth it. For the hairy crab, you're gonna pay market prices, so ask before you order. Great way to start your Hokkaido day. One of Japan's most famous dishes is, of course, ramen, but Sapporo as a city is known across the country for its buttery, rich miso ramen. Now, of course, there are ramen joints across the city where Sapporo right, insulate themselves against the harsh winters they have here. But why wouldn't you have miso ramen in the very place where it was invented? Ramen Alley right here in the middle of the city. It's amazing. 
Despite the slightly incongruous name, Genghis Khan Mongolian barbecue is a classic Hokkaido dish. Considered the favorite soul food of Sapporo, right? some people will have these grills in their homes. And many of the local hardware stores will sell disposable versions so you can grill on the go. Now, unusual for Japanese cuisine, the primary meat is lamb. Primarily, it's going to be Australian or New Zealand lamb, but in many cases, you'll be able to find locally raised Suffolk sheep uh, that, that are raised here in Hokkaido. I'm told that it pairs brilliantly with copious amounts of beer, so what better place to consume this wonderful Hokkaido dish than in a brewery? But perhaps even better, what better brewery to consume it in than in the brewery that made Sapporo famous? Sapporo Brewery. Come by. Come by. Sapporo is Japan's oldest beer brand, founded in 1876 by Sebe Nakagawa. At just 17 years old, he traveled alone to Germany to learn the craft that would make him and ultimately his city world famous. And the best bit about doing a brewery tour in the brewery that made Japan famous is tasting the beer. Oh god damn, that's good. Japan has a reputation as a very expensive country, and in many situations, that reputation is justified. The situation is made even more complicated by massive volatility in the exchange rate markets over the last 18 months. So it's very difficult to say with any degree of certainty, yes, Japan is very expensive, or no, Japan is not very expensive. But the further you move away from Tokyo, even in big cities like Sapporo, you can still eat, drink, and stay very cheaply if you're looking in the right places. So don't eat in your hotel restaurant, look down those alleyways, knock on the doors, and you can have a great time here for not a lot of money. And on that note, let's do the rundown. A cup of delectable Family Mart coffee will cost you just 150 yen, and it might be the best cup of coffee you've ever had. From a convenience store, a pint of beautiful Sapporo beer will cost you around 450 yen. And for the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, you're gonna pay around 390 yen or $3.42 as of November 12th, 2018. We're in Japan, so I don't mind talking about my least favorite subject in the world, tipping. It's not done here. It should never be done here. No matter how tempted you are, no matter how great the service was that you experienced, do not tip. Why? Because it's considered extremely offensive here and insulting. So no matter how good the service was that you experienced, no matter how guilty you feel, do not tip. It can be interpreted that you are somehow better than the person that served you or the service they provided was beyond what they would normally provide. So keep your wallet in your pocket, enjoy the food and the service that you'll experience, and then go to Mr. Donut. Despite being the technological center of the known universe, Japanese ATMs have some odd quirks. They seem to have their own personalities. They don't want to give you your money, sometimes they pretend not to understand your card, and sometimes they go to sleep at half past eight. But the good news is that seems to have changed a lot in the last two years. And convenies like Lawson's, Family Mart, and especially 7-Elevens are not only open 24 hours a day, they also have ATMs that will accept just about any debit card on earth. But if yours doesn't work on the first go, don't give up. Keep trying. If you select it, you want to take it out of checking the first time, maybe select a different account and see what happens. Let's see if mine works. No. Fail. Incorrect pin. If you have any questions, please. It's not the incorrect pin. The little man in the ATM is not in a good place right now. It's like a national lottery. Statement. Card. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Wait, that was not staged. That really happens all the time. For a city that endures bitter and prolonged winters, there is an admirable and undeniable warmth to Sapporo. That warmth radiates from its food and from its environment and from its people. And if you spend some time here, you'll notice also a charm and a quirkiness to this city that is immediately disarming and incredibly attractive. Sapporo seems entirely comfortable with being so different than most other Japanese cities. And while you can't yet glide northwards to Sapporo in the comfort of a bullet train, this city is compelling, welcoming, and fascinating enough to warrant whatever effort is required to experience it 
at every level.